have to calculate three for double integrals. And then we said a double integral, it, uh, it represents the volume of a solid underneath a surface over a rectangular region. And indeed, we also said that we do have somewhat a relatively efficient way to evaluate a double integral that is from the so-called Fubini's theorem. Fubini's theorem uh, says a double integral can be evaluated in two ways. Each is a double integral. Okay? Each it is a double integral. We could evaluate the double integral first in terms of y first. Y is matching the inner integral sign c to d, and then the outer integrals for x, x is matching a to b. One way to evaluate the double integral. By the way, this entire thing, it is called as an iterated integral, and this is the so-called double integral. Or put in this way, a double integral, it is always evaluated as somewhat an iterated integral, okay? And also a double integral can be evaluated using the iterated integral using x first, integrating x first. So this dx, it's matching the inner integral sign x running from a to b, y it is matching the outer integral sign from c to d. Okay, Fubini's theorem. How about that? let's look at some, get one or two examples done first. So this is example 5.6. Evaluate a double integral. The region, now I hope you see this is not a cross product. It is a rectangular region, a rectangle indeed in the xy plane. We want to evaluate this double integral, and actually, according to the textbook, it is example 5.6 on the textbook. We are going to integrate y first, then x. So, this is what I did. Mostly, I just copied from the textbook. Evaluate a double integral as an iterated integral, y first. y is changing from 0 to 3, and then x is changing from 0 to 2. Make sure you do match. Uh, first of all, write the order of y dy dx correctly, and then do match how y changes and how x changes. This time, we evaluate the integral in terms of y first. So you, well, it's just like it's worth to mention. It's just the way you do integrals. It's just like the way you do partial derivatives. Okay, integration in terms of y, and consider everything about x as constant. So we have 3x squared, the entire thing is constant. According to the antiderivative, it is 3x squared times y. Antiderivative y, clearly it's y squared over 2. And uh, did I wrote anything wrong? I think uh, I I think this y is not needed. This y is really not needed. This y should yeah. This y should not be there. This y should not be there. Okay. And then I meant to say uh, it might be a good idea. Yeah. Uh, this round we just did the integral in terms of y. So you replace y with 3 and replace y with 0, do a subtraction. Replacing y with 0, I hope you see the tail, the entire thing is 0, because each has a y there, the entire thing is 0. Replace y with 3, that's how I got a 9x squared, and the y squared, that would be 9. 3 times 3, that's 9x squared. So, I got the answer as well. Uh, after evaluating y, and we will get a remaining integral, everything in terms of x. And then this turns out to be regular integral. So you calculate an antiderivative in terms of x, besides this time has nothing to do with y here, right? No y. I suppose it's not easier. So I get the integral as 15, 15. What I did here, I evaluated this double integral using the so-called Fubini's theorem. And indeed, I considered the integration in terms of y first, then x. And indeed, the Fubini's theorem says that we can integrate in terms of x first, then y. So the second part, part B, 
This is the way I just did it. Basically, it's pretty much the same problem. I'm doing this time integration of the x first. Accordingly, you want to change the inner integral sign. Okay? x is changing from 0 to 2, then y is changing from 0 to 3. Integration in terms of the x first with respect to x first. This is x cubed, antiderivative is x squared. y is constant. I should have put a y x in the end, y times x, but anyway, I guess it's a little easier to follow. Still keep x first than y. So x times y. This time you're going to replace x with 2 and x with 0. So if my calculation is correct, correct, and indeed, uh, we are going to have an in the remaining integral in terms of y only. And then this is the integration in terms of y only. And using the same fundamental theorem calculus, at least I'm seeing I'm having the same numbers right. So I believe both calculations should be all right. Should be all right. Any questions? Well, if you are watching the video, maybe pause and for a little bit. If you have questions, send them an email and you could, uh, well, uh, stop by those dropping sessions. We'll pick up from there. Okay. Otherwise, I'm going to continue. It's the calculation of double integrals. Uh, this time, it is from checkpoint 5.4. It's still from the textbook. Okay, uh, we want to evaluate this double integral in two ways, x times e to the x, y, and the region it is a rectangular region. Don't be intimidated by this log n of 5. Log n of 5, it's a constant, it is a number. So whatever we are having here, it is a rectangular region. Log n of 5, it is just a number. Okay, first I'm looking at this uh, double integral. I know there are two ways to evaluate, right? That is according to the Fubini's theorem. And uh, what I figured out here is basically look at this inner integral first. Yeah, this time it's letting me highlight the inner integral here. The inner integral in terms of x. Okay, if this y is bothering you, you consider x times e to the x, or x times e to the 2x, or things. I'm saying it doesn't require integration by substitution, right, in the very first round. Uh, I mean, we can handle it, we can handle it, but anyway, it may take a little longer time. Okay, so I'm thinking, well, according to the same Fubini's theorem, I know a double integral, the same double integral can be evaluated in a different order. dy dx, y first, then x. And then in particular, well, if you look at this, this is what I highlighted, as a guy call this as the inner integral. And certainly it doesn't require very good understanding and a very good knowledge of integrals. This time, see, when we look at the integral in terms of y, it could be done somewhat little faster than integration by parts. We can get this done using integration by substitution, but you will not. Okay, so I feel this Double integral, there are two ways. I feel the second arrangement might be better. At least it will help me get started faster, easier. Okay, so basically I just consider using this second approach. Using this second approach, this is what I did. X e to the x, y, dy. That's the inner integral I'm talking about. And then I'm saying you are going to keep x as it is, okay. So do a small substitution. Basically what I did here is I take u as x times y. Keep in mind x is constant. So x dy together can be considered as dxy. So this is really in the fashion of eu du. Accordingly, the antiderivative itself, right, eu. So u is x times y, so that e to the x y. And then keep in mind that the way we got here, we consider integration to the y first. 
So we are going to replace y with log n of i and y with zero. Okay. And next round, I have this antiderivative e to the x times log n of i. This is when I put in log n of i for y here. When I put in zero for y into the same expression, it's e to the zero, right? So this is how I get one. And again, don't be puzzled, have no fear about this log n5. Log n5, it is just a fixed number. You keep it that it is most of the time. You need it all the way to the end. Okay. Keep log n5 as it is. It's a constant. And I suppose we can handle the antiderivative with this constant times x and antiderivative 1. So you need uh, the antiderivative of this part, it is. 1 over log n of n, log n of 5 times e to the x times log n of 5. Antiderivative of x is 1. And uh, then using the final round of evaluation, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I don't want to read this thing. Uh, you help me double check with the numbers. Uh, mostly, I believe I should be fine. Replace x with 1. This is what I got. Replace x with zero. Don't forget, e to the zero is one. Okay, e to the zero is one. So we do have this thing here, and we do have this number one over log n five. This is the final answer I got, and I think that's it for section five point one. Section five point one. It is the introduction of double integral. And then we say a double integral is the volume underneath uh, the surface of a solid over a rectangular region in the xy plane. And also, just make it clear, a double integral you need could be negative. Okay, when the surface it is entirely underneath the xy plane, the double integral is negative. And when the surface it is entirely above, then it must be positive. And also it could be partially above, partially below. And then if that is the case, it really depends. If the part below it is bigger, then the double integral it is negative. If the part above it is big, then the double integral it is positive. Uh, I say that should be about it. A double introduction of double integral and also don't forget actually this is more important Fubini's theorem Fubini's theorem it says a double integral can be evaluated in two ways each is an iterated integral and in either they should be the same and also uh, we show the one simple example uh, we say in general the order either way would work but anyway, many times the order doesn't matter, like in this case. Thank you for watching. See you next time.